So the most powerful trick that I can give you that you could use is the zero stamina, basically battle glitch. You become an unstoppable fortress when you're like this. Now, normally you're like, when you run out of stamina, that's a bad thing. And it's true, there's no advantage to it, except you can now continue to do fights without consuming stamina. So if you're standing here with zero stamina and an enemy runs into you, then you are able to just keep fighting. You just can't move. As long as you're not resting, you can't move. And so I'm going to move this unit over here as well, like this. So, so you can see here, they're going to come up to attack us, and they're we're going to fight just like normal, meaning you can hold a position and draw aggro, or you could throw a unit, you know, basically put them in the middle of a bunch of units, and they, it doesn't matter how many units are fighting them. If they could beat them all, they will beat them all, as long as you don't try to rest. So this is fine. But also, you could use a, a little bit of a... It's not an exploit again, but it's like it's um it's like a it's a trick that I feel like isn't intended, but it is a mechanic they let you do. So you can see here, right? We're gonna fight like normal, even though we have zero stamina. But if you want to, without ever recovering stamina, you can now manipulate your character. So even though they can't move, they can move. You could chain characters around so you're pushing them forward a little bit like by a little bit, and they're going to be eating all the fights, not consuming stamina because they have none. So that is a trick that you could absolutely use. Now, it's a little video gamey, and I don't think it's necessarily what they intended, but it's absolutely, if you're looking to min-max, this is the kind of shit you're going to want to be doing. So we have no stamina, and we're still absolutely wrecking them. Although this, this is... I'm in my true Zenorian playthrough for this tip, so this isn't the most impressive combat, I'll be honest. But anyway, there we go. So this one is probably one of the more beginner-focused ones, um, but it's it's very important. So if you are wandering the map like this, you're going to end up eventually wandering into a spot pretty quickly, and you'll get into a combat. Basically, a cutscene will start, and a combat will appear. Now, just in case you didn't consider it or didn't think about it, what you should do, instead of this is you doing this battle, you just run past it and you just keep exploring. So the combat encounters most of the time, especially early in the game, later in the game, it'll change. Um, they won't stop you. Now the encounters themselves will get harder. And so if you actually get caught by these enemies, you'll have to do combat. And if you lose, they'll reset where you're standing. But if you kind of juke enemies around, you could do a lot of exploring, you know, like a lot of um, getting these items Especially completing, this will help you complete side quests way early. Um, especially this one. You can get the king, the king sword, like, right now, basically. The the super powerful plus five to all stats super sword. You could basically get that right now. Um, so, ba the basic tip is go around and explore as much of the map as you can as soon as you can. Get all the resources, see where all the fights are and then tackle where you want to go. Let's take a look what else we can get here. It'll also get you a lot of divine shards and stuff, but you do got to be careful. Some of these fights, if you're not ready for them, they will knock you out, and they will put you to a different uh, thing. I feel like we come here later in the game. I feel like that's like the true final fight of the game right there, if I remember, if you did the true Zenorian one. All right, but that's for that tip. Explore your map ASAP. -P. Another thing that I think is probably a pretty good idea to do early on is to just have a squad that's dedicated to just doing ranged assists it could be magic it could be physical it doesn't matter but the way range assist works at least according to reddit and who knows how much you could trust them but it seems to, you know it, it seems to track at least if the specifics are a little bit wrong the idea seems to be there but the amount of damage you do with range assist seems to be based off the, the corresponding stat of the leader so whoever the leader is and so it seems to be that basically your range assist is about a AOE, a target all enemies, 35 potency um, attack based off the leader's physical attack. That also, the potency increases, they say by five, but I, you know, I don't know if that's exactly right, by each character that also has the same ranged assist effect in the party. So if you have four or five people two, you know, three, four or five people all with ranged assist, your ranged assists are going to be doing more damage. Now, this could be something you easily deploy. 
and just have follow behind, like if you have two main units, this will just increase their damage, you know, in an AOE thing, right? For example here, right? Let's take a look here. We're doing 477. When we do our range assist, we're now doing 666, right? So basically the way it's going to work, you're going to come in, you're going to do an initial, well, that's them doing their initial hit. They're cheating basically, but then we're going to do our initial hit and then we're going to go through, we're going to, we're going to wipe them out. In fact, we're going to end up at full HP because of our healing, but so that's one thing I recommend you doing. You do got to be careful. Sometimes there will be enemies that do things based off their, like, based off, like, sometimes it'll it make your numbers go bad. So don't just automatically use it every time. But it is something that you, I think you are going to be want to using most of the time. Especially because it, it'll even, like, eat um, evasion stacks off a thief, which is just really good. There's just a lot of comps it's going to be pretty good with. Also, parry. Lord. One quick note is the zero... Uh, stamina, you know, whatever, exploit or whatever. It does not work with range assist. Your characters will not do range assist when they get zero. <laughs> so it's not like something you could just keep doing infinitely well for free. But there are like a lot of watchtowers and a lot of places you could stand. And even then, just following behind and helping units turn that tide when you don't need to like... If your team is like outmatched by something, you could just have a basically a backup plan there. So I just wanted to point that out. This is kind of a reverse tip in a, se in a sense, um, but quickly into the game, you are going to get the ability to turn in divine shards for items, basically. You just go around, you'll explore, you'll find it pretty quickly um, when you get the option. But it, this is basically like early on, like maybe you do some of these to unlock some of these higher level options up here. Um, like, because there's certain thresholds, like, oh, you have to spend a certain amount. And to be honest, like the Templar Sword, Templar Axe and stuff, they're not that good. They're fine, but they're not that good. They're good early on, but like, just honestly, maybe a few of these are fine or even some Hollowed Corn Ash. Um, but once you can get to the items, like getting, getting the Lapis Pendant early on is insane. And the basically I'm saying don't just invest all of these. Don't just buy 15 or 10 of these do of, Dues of Skill or the Dues, even the Strength ones. Like, yeah, they could be okay and some sense but you really want to be saving as early as possible for some of these really really good items not this one i'm just trying to look at it here but like the angel plume the uh heaven wyvern reigns the white ear cat hood broken millennium scepter very good this shield is very good a lot of these items are incredibly powerful um even the ones that i didn't get it's not that they're bad it's just that like they weren't relevant by the time i came back to get them um, like I have 11 of these now, right? So that's why I haven't bought the 12th one yet, even though the 12th one's good. Holy Brooch, so good. You heal 20% HP whenever you use any active skill on not even just a gladiator, on anybody, this is great. But on a gladiator, if they're using mounting charge, this is a 50% heal with their action on top of increasing their attack, on top of like they already have, then maybe you don't need to use bulk up, but you can still have bulk up. Angel Plume is one of the most broken items in the game. Give something 20 initiative and the ability to use Tailwind to give everything else 10 initiative. Um, so save up for these. Don't just, I know that these are like really good. Like, oh, you can only use five. That's that's five attack on any character you want. Five attacks a lot. It is a lot, but you're going to get enough of these. You don't need to, not enough to max out every character, of course. But it's like, in order to give like a couple characters, you know, five of these, you'll get enough. Even Dues of Illusion, which is all of them mixed in one. You're going to get enough to give a couple characters five, like your favorite characters, you don't need to really go too heavy into these. Although maybe early on you could buy like 10 to 20 shards of them just to unlock the next ones. But then you want to start getting these items. So don't fall into the trap of just thinking the stat increases are the best thing. Because I don't think the divine shards are literally limited, but they're 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 unlimited, but they're there's a very there's a finite amount that are easy to get. And then an infinite mount that seems to be impossibly annoying and difficult to get through basically digging. It's like you get one every five minutes or something, right? So it's just like, no, thank you. I wouldn't, I would probably end up using Colosseum coins to get these before I use the divine shards. All right. Maybe the most important one that I did not really follow despite making guides is please, please have at least three super squads. Don't put all your eggs in one basket of having one super mega OP squad. It'll work for a very long time. In fact, it will work almost the whole game, if I'm being honest. If you're using a lot of items and stuff like that to keep their stamina up and you, you position yourself badly, 
um, that you could get out of a lot of that stuff. Um, but like this squad here can kill 99.9% of content in the game, but you know what it can't kill? It can't kill the final boss of the game. There's like two or three fights in this game where this build just folded in on itself. And when it did fold in on itself, I didn't have anything that good to go into backup. Now I did manage to get through it, but it, with it was a lot harder than it had to be because I didn't really have much investment in most of these squads. Like if we just look at, let's look at my number one squad here, right? They're level fifties. Let's look at my second best squad, 37s, 38s, which is still something I used them for a while, but then I kind of just stopped innovating, right? I just did three Vikings, a werebear, Prince is here. Like this is not min maxed, right? This is just like, all right, it's good enough. Let's just keep going. This build's going to carry everything. And there are some fights where you have to hold the one, one particular fight where you need to hold one, two, three, four, four points at the same time without them. So that you have to make sure that you have to hold them all. Then you also have to go attack a fifth point. So you need like five squads for that fight. that are at least able to hold a spot without it getting uh, taken. And, you know, so either jumping a, a unit around to try to do all this, but two of them you have to hold at the same time. And then when you get to the final fight, if your build doesn't work, it's so frustrating. So do yourself a favor. Don't go all in on one squad. Really try to develop a few. I would say three at minimum. You don't really need that much more than three, probably. Um, squads that are really synergistic, really powerful. And try to make sure that they're different. Like, they they win fights in different ways. Um, like, you know, just like another rule of thumb, right? Maybe you want a dodge tank on one comp and another comp. You might just want a super physical defense guy or a magical, you know, physical and magical defense, like, in a lane. Um, or maybe someone that can go and guard the back row, like Elaine. Elaine just like the best. But like, try to do things that do things different. You know, things that might like this team's a combo team. It does a lot of physical damage, um, but it also does some magical damage. But it really blows up things on the first turn, and it's incredibly powerful. But I came across an enemy that they get in a, a start a battle effect, become damage immune for five attacks. They literally turned off like all my dam all my attacks on my characters. They got like, instead of doing like nine hits, they hit like twice and it just like, and then the character would heal at the end of the combat and, and I would basically have done no damage and my squad was getting decimated. So make sure you have things that can do interesting different things and have a couple of them. All right, guys, thank you for watching. That is the video. Let me know if you knew what these were. Let me know if you learned something. If you didn't learn something, if there's more tips or tricks you think I should include in future videos, let me know as well. Don't look at the pizza box. I promise it's not old. It's not old, all right? It's full of pizza that is fresh and I'm going to eat soon. Um, also, got to give a quick shout out to Ice Coffee Gaming. Thank you very much. That very first tip in this video, the one about the zero stamina still, still being able to fight. I didn't know that myself until I talked to him actually earlier today. So that was kind of cool. Um, got to learn that. So it's awesome when creators get actually a chance to talk. And um, as always, thank you very much. Boom to my members, my supporters. I really appreciate you, friends. Um, switch up the format, throwing it in here at the end to make the tips a little more digestible, hopefully, to people so they could just click on the video and start immediately getting important information. Um, but yeah, there we go. If you want to support the plat, help me make more of this stuff. You guys know what to do. Become a member. Become a supporter. Give me your money. Give me your money. Give me your money. Give me.